this video will focus on how we can create groups of cameras on a PC Extreme. And that would be useful in uh, many cases where you have many, many, many cameras that you want to um, bring back a selection of those. And I say selection of those, like having multiple cameras selected, for instance, to execute a preset recall across multiple cameras. So that is something that uh, we'll be exploring how we can do that in a dynamic way. And by dynamic, I mean that these groups can be orchestrated and constructed on the controller instead of in a hard uh, coded fashion. The video here is also in a series of videos where we have already been working with PC Extreme, having a video router selecting the cameras for us, having a custom made hard coded preset recall across cameras in this little button here. So for instance, when we click that, it would recall preset number one on um, five hard coded camera IDs of the Canon cameras uh, up here. But now we will create the group function. To do that, I want to recap how is it that the camera selector works. And that is done by the, the camera selector is basically generated by behavior uh, by a generator. So it's automatically generated and that makes it complex somehow. But if we look at the generator here and we go to the template behavior, then in the template behavior and especially looking in the JSON code, we can see that it's actually using a master behavior called extended camera mode model select. And if we show master behavior or parent behavior here, then we can inspect that. We did that in the first video, so I won't go too much through that in this one, other than to mention that the two things, the two essential things that we need to store and recall would be the information that the set cam trigger works with, which is the device index, and also the um, set, 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 let me see, set model, yeah, set model trigger, which is working with the link selector. That is a reference to what brand or what configuration basically is being used. So we, we need those two things and uh, to record those. And that is um, how we'll be doing this. But um, we also need to create some variables. And I think we'll just create, um, let's make three groups sitting on keys seven, eight, and, and nine. OK, so for each of these, um, I will create variables on this layer. And I think you will have to kind of follow along and then see if you get the idea of what happens here. Um, just before I do it, I want to say that the absolutely critical things that we need to store is the device index and also the link selector. But you saw in the first video that we would also store the tally index and the camera name. You can kind of extend what you're about to see to also include that information if you want. So in a similar way, you should be able to achieve that. But now I just want to focus on the essentials. All right, so let's go back to button number seven here. And um, well, on, on this layer, we'll create a variable. And we'll just call it group one device index. All right, we'll just choose long one for that. No, wait, let's just take device index group one. And then I just copy paste this so I can quickly create a few of these. Then I want group two and I also want group three. All right. Then I also want to have link selector group one and group two and group three. Nice. OK, <clears throat> so the idea is when I press this button shortly, it should take the contents of device index group one and link selector group one and store in the global variables down here. So th that's actually a pretty simple operation to do that. Um, then if I press and hold, I want it to do the inverse, that is to take the global variables of the configuration and then store inside of these variables. But before we get started on that, there are a few things that I want to say. First of all, you see that they get default values by just creating them like this. And this is because by default, a variable is created with a range from one to 10 with a default value of one. And we don't want that. We want to, if we're going to show more, we want, first of all, these to just accept any value because we use the variables just to accept any value, especially the link selector, which is a string and not an integer of anything. Secondly, we also want it to be persistent. Persistent means that it will get stored in the controller. So when you reboot the controller, you're not you know, operating from scratch. You'll see that the values are still stored the same as you set them last time. So that's two things that we want to do for these variables. And um, therefore, 
Uh, but to make this efficiently, I kind of, yeah, okay, let's just go through each of these. It's quickly done, accept any value, persistent. Let me do it over here, accept any value, persistent. Link selector, any value, persistent. Any value and persistent. And the final one, accept any value and persistent. Now, um, as I have said many times, <clears throat> if you need to batch do these kind of things, it's typically pretty nice for experienced people to go into the JSON editor here, because if you do, then let's just search this one up, device index group one, then you will find, oh, sorry, we need to search inside of this one, device index group. You see that um, we, we're now getting quickly into the layout for our custom stuff. There we have all the variables that we have just defined, these six variables. And it would really be easy, and this is what I would do if I were, <laughs> if I was alone. Then I would simply, um, you know, just copy paste these properties that we have right here, and uh, just copy paste those from the one to the next, and so on. Also, if I needed to create, uh, you know, up to group number six, then I would do the same. So that's just a little bit of a pro tip for you guys, um, if you want to uh, to experiment a little bit with that. Let's let's just go to. Um, to uh, basically recording. Let's record these as the first thing we want to do. So um, we have a, a blank behavior right here. And I think that's pretty fine because we are sort of just building this up from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is to create a record event handler. So let's do that. And for that event handler, we want it to be a binary type. So far, so good. And then we want, um, yeah, we wanted to do two things. So I suggest the set mode would be a sequence. Sequences are nice because there we can add steps. We can even add a little bit of waiting time in between them, but we can have two steps here. And on the first step, uh, not that we need any any time offset really, but on the first step, we'll basically say that we want the parameter, which is what we are changing. Yes, the parameter that we want to set is the variables that we've just created. That would be device index group number one. So that is the parameter. And we want to set that to the value of device index, which is the variable right here, the global one. That is the one defined down on the root level. Then on step number two, we want to take the link selector group number one, and we want to set that to the value of the link selector variable. Ah, that was... Mm, like this. Okay, so yes, okay, that seems good to me. Now let's try it. Okay, so notice what happens over here device index group one, link selector group uh, one. And by the way, just check what are they already? Link selector is Skahoy devices Canon XE Pro class basic, and the device index is one. In other words, we have that camera right there selected. So on my yet not lit up key, select number seven here. If I click this, are you ready? There we go. Yeah, we can't see that value change, but okay, then let's do something else. If I click this button, then at least I change camera over to this one. Let's now record again by pressing this one. And you see it changes this one to two. Perfect. That's nice. What if I change to this one? Panasonic camera, click this one. You see that it changes link selector group one to this value and this one to 11. Now, what if I press and hold this one to select multiple cameras? This is something we looked at in the previous videos in this series. Now, if you look inside the variables here, we now have a list of device indexes or device IDs, 11 and 17. And that is now what will be recorded in this one if I click button number seven. Okay, so we now have the store operation in place. <clears throat> and the next thing we should do is to basically make the recall operation also work out of the same premises. Now, uh, I am a little bit annoyed that we don't have any feedback visually on this one. So let's just quickly set some feedback up. That would be nice um, for us. So we'll just set a title and we'll put in a, um, um, a group number one and we'll put that in. And then I also want to have intensity, I'll just turn it, no wait, not turn it on, but set, set it to dimmed, and then I will be using an amber color for the button. All right, so it looks like this now, and also what we learned, can't remember if it was in the previous video on this one, we also want to have a conditional feedback that can really turn it on, and we can do that whenever 
the behaviors last event you see uh time to now is on a literal value of 100 like that so if it is less than or equal to so if you know the time to the last event that happened is less than or equal to 100 milliseconds it is going to light up briefly uh, having a, an intensity of on so let's just check it out if i press you see it is just blinking quickly this button now um so that is fine um okay we should basically replicate this to the other buttons for group number two and three and so on. And I would have to admit that the general way we would rec um, recommend doing this is using master behaviors because with the master behavior, we can then um, replicate some functionality. <sighs> yeah, okay, let's do it as a master behavior. It's just that because we are going to work with two IO references here, we are going to work with the link selector variable and the device index. And because we are using both, then the master behaviors won't be as awesome as they usually are. But at least things like the um, the colors and so on can be inherited or the naming of the um, yeah, of the variables here and so on can also be helpful. So th there's probably still some advantages to it. Let's let's do it. Basically, um, creating a master behavior would be like um, We'll just say group management, call it this, and then we'll copy it from, let me see, select number seven. So it's basically just copying that information over into the master behavior right there. But we still need to go to behavior numbers uh, for select key number seven here. And then um, probably, yeah, it has a lot. Let's just blank this out completely, save. Oh, can't. Okay, let's just make this. All right, and then we'll just uh, what did we call it? Group management. Okay, we have it right there. So we now have a um, th the um, behavior for select seven is now referring to the master behavior called group management. And that means we can inherit a little bit here. So this is good now. And I can go back to this one. And then if we wanted to, and we do, then we want to clean this up a little bit. Um, ah, shoot. Yeah, because we're using this binary sequence, we're not really able to fully leverage the... Okay, after thinking about it, we'll just stay with the master behaviors for now. and uh, But we will have to copy paste quite a bunch of it for the other keys. I'm sorry about that. But um, we still have a lot of lot to do that we need to, to do here. And one of them is that we need now a recall trigger that will recall this uh, grouping. That's the next thing we want to do. But um, before we do that, we also want to install the, the timing. And the timing I'm talking about is the kind of timing that we have on the keys down here. The one that, you know, short click, select the camera, press and hold is going to select another one. So um, because this code is not super easy to just get out of the system, then what I would do is to just go down to the generator for the camera selector and then look at what we were doing in the template behavior for that one because that code has it already. So basically in this window, um, the master behavior for selecting the camera model correctly is one that has these small code snippets that would be useful for us right now. And this combination, the event preprocessor here that uses the time window to previous trigger 1000 milliseconds, if you press this button, release it within 100, uh, 1000 milliseconds, then it will fire the act up trigger to you. We will copy that and then we'll paste it in. And actually, why not just do this and then have a second tab open for doing that operation. So wait, I just open this guy and uh, go to select. No, wait, it's the group management master behavior. And then I will also go into the JSON code of this one. So for the, um, mm, okay, I took the wrong one at first, at least. So because what I want to do is to go to the toggles. The toggles are those that has this event preprocessor that will do the opposite. That is, if you have held it for 1000 milliseconds, I'm going to send this trigger your way, the act down. And that's exactly what I am, ooh, sorry. Now we shut that one down. I need to go back to this one. So that's what we need for the uh, record trigger. So we'll just 
insert it right there. This is true. This is right. We need to make sure the commas is, is set correctly and so on. All right. So uh, actually, let's just test this. So um, I'll just navigate over to my uh, to my new button here. And then um, what we can do to just reset the the whole thing here is <clears throat> if we select uh, yeah, sorry. If we go down here, we can now see that we have device index five and we have the Canon camera selected. So we should be able to see that if I press and hold this one for 1000 milliseconds, we are substituting Panasonic PVC and those two numbers with five and Canon. Are you ready? Press and hold and it resets to five and the Canon configuration. Perfect. All right, so uh, we can now continue and then we, we uh, basically do the opposite. Uh, we could continue with using this UI for it. Uh, all right, let's do that. So we'll just have a second event handler called recall. And we'll set this up as a binary handler type. We also want to do the, um, um, the, the sequences. So we'll just select a sequence here, add two steps to that sequence. And now the parameter that we want to set when we recall is the variables device index. And we want to set device index to the value of device index group one. The second one we want to set is the link selector. And we want to set that to the value of link selector group one, like that. Nice. And then finally, we want this to only happen if we release the button before 1000 milliseconds, because otherwise what would happen if we try to record? We would recall and then it would record what we just recalled. So for this to properly work, we need to go back here and then find the good old set cam where this event preprocessor and binary act up, actually we need to act up instead of act down is being used. Okay, so going back here, and that by the way means that the binary type should be act up. But now we have it in our JSON code anyway. So I'm pretty confident that if we do this, and let's just show the JSON of this whole thing, then we have the recall here, let's just collapse this quickly. And then we have Oh, wait, it's record that we need to read. You know, so this is the one. All right, binary type, we already have it. So we'll just substitute this with the event processor binary type like that, save. All right, let's see if this would work. So we'll just quickly select something else like camera number um, six. And then if I click this button, we should now see that camera six is substituted by camera five as we press. All right, so that works, ladies and gentlemen. Just click this one and it, it's going to recall these values that we have here. Now, uh, let's see what happens if I add this one and I add this one over here. So now we have, we can see the device index would be five, six, and seven. <clears throat> and when I then press and hold, we'll see that these values are being recorded up here. So if I go over to the Panasonic camera, like this one, and press and hold this guy, so now we have two Panasonic cameras selected, right? Panasonic camera configuration for the link selector. We have these two IDs 17 and 11. Just go up here, uh, press. And then you see these values are now being transferred down to the device index and the uh, devices Canon XC Pro class uh, is now the value of the link selector. So that is actually working exactly as we wanted it to. So we have basically created our group now and the ability to uh, to group all these things up. We can improve it a little bit to show something about how much we already have in it. And um, I suggest that we then go into the default feedback of a master behavior. And for instance, we'll just change this to group number one. And then down here we can, um, we can uh, insert in a clever way. Let me see if we can do this. I think like that. Okay, add dynamic value, we can add a dynamic value, which would be coming from the variable. And say we want to see device index group number one. In here, let's submit that one. And it says mall. And there is a little trick now. I'm not sure we can do that by editing this one. So it seems to have some modifiers and those modifiers Mm, okay, 
Now, this is where you need to go to our website. You can open the website for the wiki, skahoy.com, search up IO references, you'll find this page. And on this page, you'll find some information about how you can get modifiers in place to um, interpret what it is you see. There, there is one called uh, count, which will tell you how many variable values does a variable have. In this case, we can have multiple, right? Um, because we can press and hold and, and then it would have like a list of uh, device indexes. You can also join them all together with a token. So um, let's try that. Um, first of all, we can uh, put in count. Let's, let's try this. So now it says three. And that would be those three values. All right, nice. But then maybe instead of just seeing that number, I would like to see um, like this. It says cams in group. And then down here, I want to insert another one. I'll just basically copy paste this one just real quick. That would be easier for me. And then that was another one, the one called join. And then I can put in a string like a dash if I want. And then you see now it's it also tells me which ones. So I could put in front of this if I want it IDs colon. But do I really want that because that's a lot of space I'm losing there. So probably not. But I would like to have a comma instead like this. And I now see a comma already, I can probably hopefully maybe that also separates them with a the space. But once again, not so useful for me. Um, because these additional characters will just water down the amount of space I have available. So camps three. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And I could put a colon here, and that would then be ID number five, six, and seven. Of course, we don't know if it's Canon or, or Panasonic cameras, but this is what it's um, now uh, saying uh, right here out of this one. Okay, so basically what we want to do now is to um, replicate this to the buttons just next to. So if we go to button number eight and nine, um, we would use the same group management master behavior. And this is now where you can see I'm, I'm basically just getting copies of the exact same functionality here because the um, what we have on, on, on button number seven is just a reference to this parent ID. But I need to modify all the things that has changed. And this is where it, it you you don't see master behaviors come out as, um, you know, the effect of them is not super awesome because normally master behaviors are super smart because all you need to do is to change the uh, parameter, the IO reference in top. But in this case, we have IO references of two sorts. We have our two variables. We are working actually four variables that we are working with, but two of them are the ones that we want to change between. And that makes it much more muddy how this would actually work. So um, I'll just do event handlers at first. And basically, I'll more or less, yeah, okay, I'll just more or less copy over everything, the feedback conditional, the feedback default, the event handlers, and then I will filter out certain things for select number eight. So I'll just paste this in here. Um, just keep this, it doesn't matter. Uh, then we go up to the event handlers. I think the order, the accept trigger is not necessary. At least all the event processing here is not necessary to change. The binary type is the same, so we can keep that. But I need to have the binary sequence because the binary sequence is not inherited out in the details uh, here. So I need to keep binary sequence. And I would there have to basically quickly change this to two in these two cases. Okay. Then on the record, I have sort of the same. I can have, I can expect all that to be inherited. And I need to have the binary sequence repeated in its entirety like this. Then on the feedback side, I need to keep this one, call it group two. Uh, this one has to change because we have a reference to a group number two variable. Now the color doesn't need to change. Those can be inherited from the master behavior. And also this feedback conditional can be inherited. So all in all, I do think that we have a at least a reduction. Now, everything that's left is something that basically needs to change except the device index here and the uh, link selector variable. So um, maybe it's not that bad after all. And um, 
we can see that at least group two responds differently than uh, we saw just a moment ago. So let's just copy the event handlers that we just made here over onto select nine and see if um, we can make a quick adaptation to the third group as well by just changing these numbers to three. Um, a little trick maybe, pro trip tip here would be to mark this, use command D on a Mac at least, then it is going to multi-select multi um, GR2, the places where this occurs in the text. And that means you have now four places you can change just using arrow keys on the keyboard and change it to a three, and then you need to go and change this one to three. So that's a, a quick way to edit the JSON code as well. So group one, two, and three, reflecting the things out here. Let's try it out in real life. So we just enable our, um, um, yeah, make another group of Canon cameras here. Just select a few of these like this, and then we'll just press and hold to store it in group number two. Let's make something with the Canon, uh, Panasonic cameras. By the way, notice if I press and hold here, I can't select the Canon, uh, the Panasonic cameras. It will only select cameras that or add in the toggle function. It will only add cameras of its own type. And that is now done. So I press and hold this one and then it has selected these. Okay, um, of course we can do this across camera selectors as well. So maybe, I mean, if you want to go and see what, what about cameras on, on these pages as well, can we work with these? Yes, we can press and hold to add more Panasonic cameras to this group. Uh, let's see if we can see that happening. Yeah, you see all these Panasonic cameras that are now added. Just press and hold to add it to that one. Okay, nice. So um, we go back to home. And what we need to watch out for now is, yeah, you, you see we have stored all these values. So let's, let's, let, let's press the first one. It selects these four cameras, uh, five, uh, three cameras as expected. And we can see the variable has picked it up correctly and the link selector is correctly made. We click this one. What do we see? We see um, these cameras of four, eight, and three being selected to the variable index uh, device index here. And then finally, if we click this one for the Panasonic cameras, then it would be four cameras being selected into that group right here, as you can see. Hmm, it's kind of interesting. It actually does set the camera name correctly. I did not expect that. Why is that? Do we have a virtual trigger for that? Kind of interesting. Oh no 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 no! It did it did not. As I said, it is changing the device index and the link selector. And if you wanted to have the list of camera names included in this, you would have to, um, and also the tally index. By the way, you would have to manually create variables to store those values and recall those values as well if you want to have them included as well. But at least this shows you how you can make this multi. Uh, gr group select here um, across these things. And then basically, if you then release the shift function here and you go back here, it means that also recalling presets on these cameras, even moving the joystick will work across all these three cameras that were in the group. So um, you sort of have it already. But to kind of get back to what was in the second video in this series, we had this little project going that we wanted to have this quick recall reset button. And uh, let's just revisit that because what we can now do is to um, basically have it for the Canon um, for the Yeah, we, we made this recall preset number one, recalls preset number one for five hard coded cameras. What if we instead made this and assuming that we have dedicated ourselves to saying group number one is supposed to be Canon cameras, because that's the that's the requirement we are dealing with here. Well, unless uh, it kind of is. I mean, you could make an event handler that would select on whether the link selector group one equals the right configuration and make that recall presets across. You can do that. But um, I think my main point is just to say, if we change this, sorry, <clears throat> if we change these five cameras, um, oh, sorry, maybe we just, can we, can we undo? Yes, we can. 
All right, so we go in here and then the selection of cameras we have, we don't want that to come from a hard-coded selection. So we'll remove it and then we'll do this and then we'll basically say that this selection of cameras will come from device index group number one. So now you can see that the hard-coded cameras has been exchanged by those selected in group number one. Now we have no way we can actually uh, test it out, um, but this is uh, what is now happening. And of course we should then go and change this to something Canon group one or group one Canon or whatever you want to say. But this is this is just your recall button that will basically recall all the cameras in group number one, which could be kitchen. So you could also go the other way and call this one kitchen and kitchen if you want to have it specific for your show. All right, everybody, um, thanks for watching this video and following along. I, I hope all these pro tips will help you to make cool customized configuration for whatever your application of Skyhoy PVC controllers is. It's uh, pretty crazy what you can do and how much you can leverage from the default configurations and then build on top of that with virtual triggers and with layers of um, customized functionality that fits your exact production needs.